All right, we're talking about what's wrong with America, work ethic and things like that. So I called a buddy of mine. I've talked about him on air before. His name is Russell Ibarra. Um, he and his wife come over to the house for dinner, and he's somebody that I, I talk to more days than I don't. And I, you know what I love about this guy? Everybody knows this type of person, the kind of guy that puts everybody around him in a good mood, the kind of guy that there is no no. There is never a negative. Everything is positive. Almost every night of the week, he'll text me. Hey, Michael, I'm taking my assistant managers out to – eight of my assistant managers out to dinner at Capitol Grill to celebrate. Um, you know, they've had a good year if you want to stop by. Hey, Michael, I'm at uh, Amazon Grill with my uh, – with all my busboys, and if you want to stop by. And it's just – wow. I mean, how many people that own a company that have – I don't know how many employees, a lot, do things like this. But one day I said, look, I want to meet you for lunch, and I want you to tell me the story of how you got started. And it is such an inspiring story. So I called him, and he's out on a date with his lovely wife. And I was like, Russell, you got to do this. No, 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 I can't, Michael, I can't. So I talked him into it. Russell Labarra, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. I love your story, and I, th I think there are some young people out there that 20 years from now will remember they heard that story. Tell the story about how you got started with Gringo's, your first store in LaPorte. Especially, my favorite part is looking out the blinds, waiting on, on somebody to come. Well, actually, the, the first location was in Pearland. Oh, was it? Yes, in Pearland. Okay. All right. And um, and basically, it was one of those things where, where I had to go back into this building that uh, our family had owned, and we were making a payment of $4,852.10 a month. And the, and the reason I can remember that number is because it seared in my brain. It was so difficult to make back in that day. And I remember the day we opened, January 11th of 93, my mother's birthday, and uh, walking over to the uh, open sign to pull a, the neon string to uh, turn on the sign and standing there waiting for that very first car to pull in the parking lot. Now, I would have never, uh, I would have never guessed or I could have never predicted that uh, 19 years later, we, we would be opening a new store off 290 with a project cost of about $4.5 million. But I'll tell you, uh, I, I was and, very and, and to put this into perspective, how far you have grown in all those years? How many store, How many restaurants do you now have? We have, there are nine gringos, one Jimmy Chongas with a second one on the way. Uh, one of my franchisees, Kevin Carroll out in Rosenberg, uh, is ready to sign a deal to do another gringos. And then we have the burritos concept. There's 16 of those with... Um, with about 35 signed total. But I, um, but let me just say that if I can do it, literally anyone can do it. I was a C, a C student at best in school. Uh, my first grade report card, the teacher wrote on it, Russell always seems to be lost in space. But but I'll tell you, the, the difference for me was I, when I first got into business in my early 20s, I was, it was all about making money. But until I had my, my the, the big paradigm shift in telling me, that, um, you know what, uh, you don't go into business to make money. You go into business to produce the very best product you can, provide the very best service you can, and everything else will take care of itself. And it's been doing that ever since. But more importantly, one of the things I did about seven, eight years ago, I established our five core values. And, and the third one, reinvesting in our associates and local community, is a really, really big part of our company and what defines me as a person. So I tell you, I have a saying who better to share in the profits of a company than with those who help generate it? Good I, wish I, could, I, would, I wish you'd I wish stop I could, saying I, that to me. I wish I had the time to tell you all the stories of the things we've done for our people. No, I, and I love those stories, the story of, of the guy who's who uh, his house burned down and y'all got him another one. But, but I want to go back, Russell, because those are things that make you special, make that business special. But I really want people to understand where you were when you took over a dilapidated old building and took on a rent of $4,852.10 per month, which I have had to memorize because he says it to me so often, and and the fear that you had opening this Mexican restaurant there in Pearland, never having done that before, having— well, the, bu the building had already been four failed concepts. It was a steakhouse, Mexican restaurant, seafood restaurant, and Italian restaurant. And no one wants to go into a building that's already had that many failures under it. But, again, it was all about refocusing and, and, and making the main thing the main thing, which is your food. And we're, we're constantly changing. And I like, I like to also think to myself that even though we've been in, in business 19 years, 
with gringos it's 19 years of, of uh, experience not one year of, of experience and 18 years of repetition we are constantly trying to get better as a company that's all we focus on and we'd like to take care of the two most important things in business and especially in the restaurant business people and food and both both of them need constant attention russell what do you wish russell Ibarra is our guest uh against his wishes he's out on a date with his wife but i thought since we were talking about this i've been dying for him to tell this story on here what do you wish you had known back in those early days that you've learned through 19 years? In the early days of Gringos or prior? Uh, the early days of Gringos. Um, you know, I've, I've always tried to surround myself with people who know more than me because I can't get better if I, if I don't. And uh, and there was one particular gentleman that I hired in 96 to open up the second Gringos. His name is Joel Perkins, and he's my franchisee out in Cyprus. And uh, when I hired him and interviewed him, one of the statements he made to me was, uh, Russell, if you hire me, I will run this restaurant as if I owned it myself. And uh, he had gone through some tough times in his in his life, and as a result, I did hire him. And uh, I've never looked back. And and we, we have such a strong working relationship that uh, everybody needs to surround themselves with with people that they can trust. And we we're 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 as strong as glue. And you have how many employees now? Uh, all together uh, with the Gringos, we're well over a thousand. I just don't know the exact number. Wow. What would you say you would attribute your success? And and I know you don't like me to talk about the level of success because I've heard from you when I have in the past. But you, you have been, by every measure, extremely successful. What would you say separates those that are successful and those that are not? That's, that's, a, that's a big question to answer. Uh, there's not any one thing. Um, you know, again – I'm, I'm real big in, in taking care of those people that work for me, and and, and I'm constantly doing things for them. Uh, just, I'm on my seventh associate with a full dental makeover, a uh, complete dental makeover. And I'm not, these things are in, in excess of $10,000 a piece, but these are life-changing things that we do for our people. And, and when everyone else sees that, they buy into our core values. Yeah, and the employee that's going to run with the Bulls next year because I, I couldn't. Um, for our listening audience, Russell invited me to run with the Bulls, and I said, "I got it. It's going to take me some time. I have to check into it. I couldn't be away that long, particularly because of when it was." And so instead, he takes his assistant. So now she's running with the Bulls in my spot, which I which I don't appreciate. Russell, you absolutely positively deserve all the success you've had, and and I, I wish you know one of my dreams is one of my many concepts. My one charity is I would love to have an institute where people like you could could give speeches and mentor young people who are slightly directionless but have ambition and kind of answer those questions because I think a lot of people – there are a lot of other Russell Ibarras out there and they don't realize it. Maybe their family tells them they can't do it and their girlfriend or their boyfriend tells them they can't do it. They don't have enough money and that's for rich people. And I think people look at a Gringos or a Bullritos or a Jimmy Changas and they go, oh, well, that's some rich guy. Well, it may be now. He may not admit it, but it wasn't always. At one point, it was just a guy who took out a, uh, you know, who, who got somebody to sign on a lease and was cooking the food and serving it and parking the cars and doing everything else. So, Russell, thanks for being with us. Thank go you. Go have Mike. a fun date with your wife, your lovely wife of how many years? How many years, Russell? Oh, well. You know the neat thing about that story? Here's the American dream. Russell never went to college, but he did so well, his son went to Yale and is now an architect at one of the most prestigious architecture firms in America in New York. Ain't that America? It's a great story right there.